Welcome back again with the video number 11 of Oracle Real Application Cluster 19 C Lab Setup. So let's check what we have done so far. We reached right now to the database installation. So I will proceed with this one. So I will st uh, start first with the software only installation. Then I will create a cluster database. So let's jump in. First, we need to upload the Oracle database home binary or software. As you can see here, I will use SCP minus P capital 2021-22. That's mean I will um, upload this file to the first node and I will put it under temp directory using Oracle user. Okay, let's hit enter. Then enter the password. Hit enter again. We can see here that the file uploaded successfully. We are right now in the first node in the Oracle virtual box. So this command will unzip the file which is located in the temp uh, directory and uh, the destination will be Oracle home. So I will hit enter. Unzip operation finished successfully right now. We can see here that the version is 1.17. So we will upgrade this one to be 1.1330. So let's move first the old uh, in this directory, the old directory. But at the first, I need to go dollar oracle underscore home. And then I need to apply this command. So and then I need to unzip the whole patch, which is located already. I uploaded. So the unzip operation finished successfully. Now we need to check again the opatch version. We can see it right now it's upgrade to the 13. Yeah, we can see here to the 30 as a version and opatch succeeded. Okay, now this one will be copied during our uh, installation for the grid, uh, sorry, for the cluster database and uh, the other node will have the same version as well. Now I need to export this CV assume this ID OEL 7.9. Then we need also to configure the password list uh, for the Oracle both nodes. So I will run this one. Enter here the password. Again. Enter the password. Sorry. So right now, the Oracle user should be able to, if I do SSH, rack 2, I should be able to access rack 2 without password. That's mean on rack domain, let's see, yes, nice. So let me also check SSH rack 1 from rack 2, yep, let me exit and dot rack domain, yes, that's mean I have I am able right now to access both nodes using Oracle user without password. Nice. So once we finish the passwordless uh, configuration for Oracle user, we need to log in as a root user for both nodes. And we need also to uh, implement uh, those uh, commands. So because let's start with the second node, we need to back up the SCB and as well for the first node. Then we need to echo this to create a CB command with this option. The same for the second, uh, for the first node. So that's mean the first node and second node, both of them are right now have the same configuration. This, uh, we do this because there is an error once we try to check the password list uh, between both uh, nodes. This option is should be uh, taken. Okay. Minus T. And uh, it will throw an error, uh, ins-06006. So by using this, we can right now continue our work. Now let's start the installer. Now we need to set up the, the software only. We don't want to create a database first. Next. Here, yes, we need to uh, install this uh, database for Oracle Real Application Cluster. Here, 
it lists for us two nodes, rack one and rack two. The SSH connectivity, we already configure it. The password lists uh, uh, accounts for both nodes. Next. Right, now we need to have an enterprise edition. It depends on what you want, but take the enterprise edition, depend on the license that you have. We can see here that this is the correct. We have aura underscore base and we have also the aura underscore base db underscore home. The path is correct. Here, this file, this location, you should uh, unzip the file for this location if you want to take it. If you are unzip the file to the temp or any location, this location will be taken as a home. The temp will be taken as a home. So it's better to unzip the file to the location that you want to be as a home for your Oracle database. Next. We can see here that all the uh, Oracle groups right now is uh, correct and fit to the location that they are should be assigned to. So let's proceed with the next. I don't like to run automatically the scripts uh, using root privilege or sudo. I I like to run them by by them by uh, by myself. We can see here that we have clock synchronization and those error. We try to ignore them for now. And we can proceed. Yes. Now we want to, this is the summary. So now we want to install the software by click install. So the installer right now requests from us to execute this script as a root on both nodes. You can read here the instructions, but I will proceed right now. I will copy this. I have here two terminals. The first one here is connect to the rack one. The second one is connect to the rack two. Let me just first start with the first node. I will hit enter. That's it. The second node. Hit enter. Enter. And that's it. Now let's back again to the installer to continue the installation step. So we back again to the installer. So let's click OK once we finish the boot. Now we can see that the registration of that of Oracle database was successfully successful. So we can right now close. Now let's back again to the terminal. You can see here that I am connected here to the rack one and rack two that means this is the first node and this is the second node and here also i source for the grid uh, environment for the root user the same for the second node and also i export the oracle base to be in the temp directory and the same for the second node and also i issue lsplk to see what i have disk in you know, right now we can see that sdc1 which is uh, assigned right now to the uh, crs uh, disk now we need to create a far a and uh, S, uh, and data disk uh, groups so this will allow us to create a cluster database and store the data inside those disks so let's right now uh, proceed with the first step now i clear the screen first we need to check what we have uh, disks we can see that i have crs as i told before right now we need to create the far a and uh, data so the fra will be this one then let's create a data let us check and list those disks if they are available we can see the additional disks are right now enabled and assigned exactly like what we want so here in the second node let me just list the disks they should be also available we can see that those disks which we create in the first node, they are right now available on the second node. Now using grid user, we need to run ASMCA to create the data disk group and FRA disk group for the Oracle database. The ASM configuration assistance window will raise up and we can see here that in the left side of this window, there is a couple sub sub list list and sub list so we need to go to the disk groups because we need to create a disk group we can see that we have here crs1 already listed here so we can we need right now to create so we will click on the create 
then we see that I want to create a data first. Then uh, I, I need it to be external and uh, everything is fine. I will give it data. I name it data. Then we press OK here. We can see here that the data is created with the size of 20 GB and we can see here it's mounted on both nodes. That means the ASM able to access this disk group from both nodes. Now let's create FRA. Create again from this one here. Then we have the only eligible disk for FRA. And this one AFD FRA1 and I will name it FRA. And then I, I don't want it normal. I need it external and uh, press OK. Nice. We can see that the two additional disks are added right now, data and FRA. FRA is 15, uh, 15 GB. We can see also it's mounted on both nodes. Everything is fine and healthy. Let's close this one. Let's check right now in the CRS, CTL, stat, res minus T. You can see here that we have, let's check, yeah, we have here CRS and data and FRA disk group. That's me and all of them are online. We can see here online in both nodes and everything is fine. I back again to the Oracle user. Now we need to create the database using database configuration assistance. So let's run this command and wait. Database configuration assistance window right now it's up and we can see that we can create right now a database so i'll click click here select this one this option create database next now we can select advanced configuration and click next we can see here that the data type is oracle real application cluster rack database i will have a general purpose or transaction processing which is called oltp and uh, I will select and I will press next. We can see here that we have two nodes. By default, they are selected. Next. Here we have this uh, option. We can name it here like this. I will name it broad, broad uh, BDB1. Let's name it like this. And I need this also to be capital. Next. Um, yes, correct. I need this one. Next. So we can specify fast recovery area, which is F, uh, FRA. And uh, we need also, if you wish also to enable archiving, you can also press this one here. If this one not come up, you can press here and select FRA like this and press OK. If this not come up also, you can refresh from here, but it's OK here. And we can also add this one. We can add this db underscore unique underscore name. Hit next. We don't want to configure. Click next. Here we have the memory sizing. You can add here also the process uh, characters, uh, character sets and connection mode sample if you want to have some uh, query and these things but for me i will keep everything as default as default and i press next so here we need to specify the management option it's good to have this option which is a uh, configure enterprise manager em database uh, express this will allow you to manage your database and uh, the cluster environment and also monitor it but for me i will uncheck this one and i will proceed with next here we have the password. I think we can put all of them as the same as password. And also I will assign the password. Next. Here we can create the database. If you want to have a post DB creation script, you can put it here. But everything is fine for me. I will proceed for, for the next step. So the prerequisite checks finished. Now we have the summary. You can look at the summary. If you find some anything is not uh, uh, configured well, you can back again and fix it. Now I will finish.
So the database configuration assistance finished. Now we have cluster database created, which is called Broad, and the SID is Broad, and also it's a pluggable, which means it's a multi-tenant database. Let me just close here. We come to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. See you next video. Have a good day. Bye.